As a digital forensics investigator and incident responder, one of the things that you need to look at is going to be the registry. And we can get into the registry simply by typing reg edit in the search box. And you can look at the registry, but it doesn't really tell the whole story. But first, let's take a quick look at the five different keys. So you have the root, the current user, the machine, the users, and current config. The current user is going to be information on the current user logged in. The local machine is going to be where most of the information about the registry is located. After that, you've got the different users that have logged into the machine and, of course, the hardware configuration. So those are the different ones that we really want to focus on. And we're going to use three different tools. You see tools here called RLA, Registry Explorer, and Reg Ripper. So I've opened up the websites where you can go and download those. The first one is you want to do a search on GitHub or just in Google for Eric Zimmerman's tools. And inside that, you're going to see a few different tools. One is called RLA. RLA is going to replay the transaction logs. Whenever a change is made to the registry, it's first changed at the transaction log level, and then it's moved into the registry after that. So we're going to take a look at that. Also, another one is going to be Registry Explorer. Registry Explorer is sort of like File Explorer, Windows Explorer, but it is used for the registry instead. So we're going to look at that as well. And another tool that's going to be very useful is called Reg Ripper. Reg Ripper is going to take the registry and it's going to put it into a text file in a way that we can read and search and find any changes that have been made to the registry. So we can then look at that incident and look at what files have been changed by that particular hacker and then we can take appropriate action. But we're not going to look at the live registry. The live registry is going to be something that should not be changed. We want to grab a copy of the registry, including the transaction logs, so that way we can build a case. Let's look where these logs and files for the registry live. So I'm going to open up File Explorer and go to the C drive, and then Windows, System 32, Then we'll go to the config folder. Make sure that you've gone into view and turn on the file name extensions and hidden items. Just to be on the safe side, you're seeing all the different files in here. So here you can see system, software, security, SAM, all these are different parts of the registry. And you may also see some log files in here as well, which eventually get merged into the registry itself. So what I want to do is I want to use that RLA program to combine all these files into something that we can then use RegRipper to go through and do searches for various different things the hacker may be up to. So I'm going to use a specific command. I'm going to pull up Notepad and just go ahead and paste this location in. And the RLA command that we're going to be doing is going to be what you see here, rla.exe-d, which is going to be the path to the files, then the output to the file where we want to send that to. So that's the one we're going to be analyzing because we're not going to be doing the live registry. And then we're going to go ahead and do dash dash cn false, and then it will go ahead and take all that data and create a new output of the registry. I've gone ahead and opened up an administrator command prompt, and I've changed the directory into the RLA directory. What I want to do next is go down and create a new folder, and I'll call it Clean Hive, and that's where we're going to be sending all that data to. And it might take a few minutes for this to get through because we are looking at a lot of different files. So we did the RLA-exe-d followed by the source, out to the destination, and I'm going to open up my clean hive folder as you see here, and here we can start seeing some files populating. When that's done, we can go ahead and open up some of the other tools that I downloaded and start using those to analyze our registry for any hacker activity. And the command completed, so I'll just drill down into the config folder. And there's my clean hive. 
At this point, we can take a look at Registry Explorer. I'm going to copy the path. And you can start exploring some of the registry without actually making any changes that could cause any problems, like you would if you were making changes to, say, the live registry. So I'm going to double click on Registry Explorer. The first time you launch it, it's going to ask you to install .NET. Go ahead and do that. It will give you an automatic link and download to it. And then after that, the second time you launch it, you'll go ahead and get into Registry Explorer where you can take a look around. All these tools are free, and the links to those uh, were provided earlier on. But you can just go to GitHub and do a search or just a Google search for any of these tools, and it'll take you right to those sites where you can go ahead and download those. Now, when Registry Explorer opens up, it's not going to have a registry to open. So what you need to do is you need to go to File, Load, Hive. And then I'll paste in the path enter and there's all the different hives so we can take a look at any one of these I'll just go ahead and choose system as an example and it's loading up the registry hive and here is just the system hive key so there's five keys of course in the registry so you can see that here's the system one right here and it gives you an idea of everything that's in it now if you know what you're looking for this is a little bit easier but unfortunately if you're not sure what you're looking for reg ripper is actually going to do a better job but i definitely wanted to expose you to this particular application because you might find it useful especially down here where it shows deleted records unassociated deleted records things like that so values are the areas to the right of the keys. So on the left-hand side, you see the hive keys, and then under that, those, you see the keys. On the right-hand side, you see the values. So the values mean basically, uh, such as, let's say it's the Windows desktop. So that's the key, and then the value is going to be over here, what color that desktop is going to be. Same kind of thing for all different types of applications. You're going to see the key on the left, and then the value on the right hand side and then underneath it you see the hexadecimal sometimes the path to that particular file things like that so here you can see that these particular values were deleted and you can go through them and see if any of those are ones that cause you any type of concern it is very helpful if you already know what it is you're looking for but since this is really an introduction to uh, this type of thing where you're looking at the registry to see if any changes have been happening. We really need to be in the next program. So I'm going to close this one, but you can feel free to move around in it just to get an idea of how it works and, and what it looks like. What we need to do now is go into what's called RegRipper. The application is here, rr.exe. And it's going to ask us for the location of the Hive file. So it's going to be that same location again. So I'm going to browse to it and paste in the location. And then we can choose any one of these different five Hive keys. I'm going to choose the software this time. Last time I chose the uh, HKEY local machine. And now it wants to know where I'd like to put that information. So I'm going to go back to my C drive clean hive. And I'm going to create a new folder. And I'll call it the application hive key. So this is going to be the output of the text file. So I'll put in the name. I'll just call it app. And you can see this is going to be a text file. And let's rip it. The larger hive keys might take a little bit longer than the smaller ones, but when it's all done, we'll be able to open it up. I'm going to go to the clean hive folder. There's my application hive key, and we see app.log and app text. So what we want to be in here is the app.txt. And here is all the information that it believed would be useful for you to be able to go through and check to see if there's been any kind of a problem or any type of hacking thing that could cause an issue. Such as, since this is the application hive key, you might see here applications that were installed or you'll see PowerShell commands that were run. You can see here PowerShell was run here. And you can see what PowerShell commands were run in order to find out what types of malware may have been put on your computer or what types of sniffing software is going on to sniff for passwords. 
So here are all the executable files that were run. If you scroll down, you can see DLL files that were also used. And as I scroll to the bottom, the DLL files make up the majority of this particular text document. So there's a lot of data in here, but the most important is going to be at the very top to tell you what executable types of files were actually run. I've gone ahead and selected the system one this time, and you can see the system.txt is going through, and it says completed with errors. So we don't know what those errors are at this point, but I can go ahead and double-click on that system.txt. And it looks like the error was it could not find a specific DLL. So you may look up what that DLL is to see what the issue might be. However, we do see additional executables that were all run. These aren't necessarily run by a user, but it could be run by the system because of something a hacker may have installed. So you may want to go through all these different executables and just confirm that none of these are any type of malware that could be causing an issue. And if you're not sure, you can contact your anti-malware company and you can send this file to them and they'll go through it and let you know what may not be normal, something that we need to look at as possible malware. Analyzing the registry can take some time to master, but creating a live copy and ripping the hive keys for information is a great way to get started in your digital forensics career. For more information on using the registry to detect hacking activities, do a search for registry hacking at learn.microsoft.com.